If you're gonna take your car to Tesla service, you might be in for a surprise. Oddly enough, it's a surprise that I actually thought should have been implemented from day one. Tesla service, at least here in Vancouver, has made a slight little change in a big way. And I'm gonna tell you guys all about this and what happens. Okay, let me start by saying, Everything I say on this channel, as always, these are things that are number one, either very heavily researched, or two, I get the information from Tesla themselves, uh, Tesla service centers, or basically just from my own experiment. Well, this particular information is verified because, well, I got it from Tesla. So if you are going to take your car in Vancouver, I'm talking about Vancouver because I don't wanna say anything as far as every other place, but for sure in Vancouver, if you're gonna take your car into service and you're gonna get a courtesy car, some things have changed. One of the biggest things that have changed is all of the service vehicles right now, all of the, the well, I guess courtesy vehicles that they have are locked into chill mode. Now, you're thinking that's not a big deal because you can take it out of chill mode. The fact is you cannot. So what that means is that when you go into, you know, drop off your car for any reason at all, and they give you a, a, a courtesy car, that courtesy car basically will be locked into chill mode. That means your acceleration is no longer at that particular car's full potential. It's gonna be granny driving the whole way through. This has this is something that I thought should have been done to start with anyway my wife and I kind of a, we, we found it funny the first time that we got a P1 uh, P90D or a P85D I can't remember and you know it had ludicrous and basically they just said here that's your courtesy car you know it's crazy because for us I didn't want to mess around with it mainly because it's not my car however because people have taken advantage of this and have kind of messed around with it, and believe it or not, a lot of people have written off Tesla vehicles, you know, uh, courtesy vehicles. So now the rules are very simple. One, every vehicle that they give to, you know, their customers uh, is gonna be all locked into chill mode. Number two, the interesting one that I, I was told is we cannot pass 120 kilometers an hour. If we pass 120 kilometers an hour, there is a good chance we're going to lose our courtesy car privileges. Now, I absolutely, you know, in order for Tesla to put this in, in, in effect, I can only imagine what idiotic moron, you know, decided to take that car, that courtesy car, and take such a massive risk with it. Well, you know, you might think I'm being a little bit harsh because while somebody hands you the keys to a Tesla, you know, you're obviously going to play with it. Well, to me, I don't look at it that way. I, I received, uh, you know, from throughout my life, I've had a lot of different courtesy cars, depending on, you know, ranging from, uh, let's say, having an accident somewhere or my car being in a shop or it could be just, oh, bad roads, bad roads. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, it could have been just a, any courtesy car. I've never abused the car. The car is not mine, but my insurance, however, is transferred to that car. And so I want to keep my insurance, obviously, you know, I don't want to affect my insurance. I don't want to have any issues. So the way I always treated every courtesy car as if it was my own, because essentially that car is mine until I return that vehicle. And the insurance on that vehicle is also mine. So now when you're taking your vehicle into Tesla service, keep this in mind. You're gonna be uh, limited to chill mode, which is again, wonderful. I think it's a, the right choice to make. And number two, you cannot pass 120 kilometers an hour. It's very smart. I think it's something that should have been done from day one. But the biggest question here is, what specifically do you think caused this? Well, recently I found out that a number of uh, Tesla service uh, uh, Tesla service stations or centers, Tesla service centers, I guess is the right way to say it, 
uh, they've had a number of their cars written off by the customers. And then basically that, that all that means is the customer brings in their car for whatever issue they may have, they get the courtesy car and then wham, bam, there's an accident. And I think, you know, when it's not the customer's fault, obviously there's, you know, somebody hit them, hit them or anything like that. Okay, I can understand that that could happen in your own car. But it's when the customers peel out, they do some really, really dumb things with uh, these courtesy cars. They end up in an accident and all of a sudden, well, there's a problem because now they just wrote off the service center's car and the service center no longer has the car available for the next customer who needs a courtesy car. A lot of people out there are, you know, they don't care. They just don't care about you know, anything that doesn't belong to them. Um, you have to take care of everything, whether it's yours or someone else's. I know people who basically went out and, and they rent cars, they buy the insurance on those cars and they abuse the heck out of those cars. Myself, for example, I have done this a lot in my life where I went out and I rented high-end cars or the cars were given to me, for example, from a specific dealer uh, to deal with. I'm so sorry about the light. The sun is hitting my camera dead on. I'm going to try and turn off somewhere here so I'm going, I don't have the sun here. Because I've, you know, I've test driven a ton of cars in my life. I've had cars for multiple days that, you know, dealerships handed over to me, but I've always respected those cars. In this case with Tesla, I think the problem is that these cars are unique. So a lot of people, they go off and they want to show off these cars and, you know, basically one of the things I'm seeing is that a lot of people when it comes to courtesy cars and I've seen this happen here where you know I even called out you know I, I talked to I was talking to this Tesla driver one day and I said dude man you gotta you're giving Tesla a bad name at this point you're, you're driving like an idiot and his response is well actually this isn't even my car this is a you know a Tesla courtesy car so I'm just trying out different things and I go well what do you drive he was driving a 60D and Tesla's courtesy car was a 90D. So he was going nuts on it, trying to figure out the biggest difference in it. And obviously his was a single motor. This one was a dual motor. So he just was having a blast with this courtesy car because it was much more powerful and everything else than his. And I told him that basically he's been a douche at this point. And you know what? Four months later, here we are with Tesla implementing these rules. Once again, this is for sure here in Vancouver. I cannot talk about your service centers, but if you guys want to find out, let me know in the comment section below. And um, is this actually a big thing that's happening all over the place? Ultimately, it is up to all of us to take care of these cars as well. Uh, you know, if we're going to damage a courtesy car, it's the next customer that doesn't have it. So just keep thinking about it in a sense of how would you feel if you had to go into, you know, drop off your vehicle and suddenly you do not have a courtesy car or they cannot give you a courtesy car simply because they don't have one, you know, uh, it, it would it would absolutely suck. So I would rather all of you out there, you know, drive carefully. When you get a courtesy car, drive carefully, be good with it, treat it with respect. It's essentially your car um, at the very least, it's your insurance. So take care of it, don't destroy it. I've gone through the trouble of actually washing my courtesy cars and cleaning it out before I return that courtesy car. And the key reason was because I didn't want the next customer sitting in a car being, you know, in a dirty car. So I wanted to pay attention to that and be respectful, not necessarily to the, to the service center or to the dealership, anything like that, more towards the next customer that is coming in. I would, I always wanted the cars to be ready to go for them. Uh, I know that a lot of these places are supposed to clean out the cars and they're supposed to detail the cars before they give it out to the customers. But if you catch a very busy center, they more often than not will get the keys from the returning customer and basically just hand it over to the new customer. Once again, I got all the sun in the world right there. Let's see if this helps. Nope, it doesn't help. I tried. All right. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for you. I can put my hand up here so it doesn't do that, but that's going to look weird. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys. Again, I'm sorry about the light, but ultimately, 
that's the new thing from Tesla. That's what I found out. So I brought it over to you guys. So now you guys know about it. I would love to hear your comments. Do you know people who, you know, they have friends? Let's call them all friends who have done this, taken advantage of courtesy cars and kind of taken it to levels they probably should not have taken. It's uh, very important, I think, for all of us to do the right thing. With all that said, thank you very much for uh, subscribing. Thank you very much for leaving me all your comments. And I'm truly sorry about the glare because I got a sun there. I can't control the sun. That's it. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Drive safe. Stay safe. Bye.